tiny house, Prepper. Live simple, live free. Hi everybody, this is Elizabeth with Tiny House Prepper. And I'm up at my sister's house in Maine. And um, we had someone recently talking about how that Bill's uh, parts for the, um, the RV was a, a guy video. It'd be nice to have a girl video, a girly one. So I definitely want to do a lady video for today. Um, my sister is a very wonderful quilter and I love her stuff. So while I'm up here with her, we're going through all of our, our mom's stuff before we do the memorial and getting everything kind of organized. And I thought I'd get to show off some of the beautiful quilts that she's done. And also she's got some here that are kind of like heritage coming down from women in our family. And she can tell you all about that. So this is my sister Dana and she'll be able to talk to you about these beautiful quilts that she makes. I'm proud of her. I, I'm going to include when I put this video together um, the one that she made me because that's at home on my bed. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, this first um, thing that I just happened to have on top because it was small is just a kit that my uh, mother-in-law put together for one of my boys. Um, I can't even really remember which one. Uh, when they were little and of course being boys that they are it's like well they don't care to take it with them so I've got I've got this one. These next couple of quilts are one of the reasons that I even ever considered quilting. This one on the bed right now is one that my great-grandfather, great-grandmother made. Um, she made tons of quilts and they're just uh, scrap quilts. She just got gathered together all the scraps of all the clothes that she found or had, she'd made or something and just sewed them in rows and made quilts out of them and this one's been loved to death. And um, it's quilted on both sides. I mean, it's it's uh, pieced on both sides, and then some of them is better than others. Um, but it's just it's been worn to a frazzle. And it looks like the batting is just like another sheet. Yeah, she just put another sheet in between. Um, there is something else in. No, it's just another sheet. I thought I felt something else, but no, it's just another sheet in there. And you know, back then she was a product of the depression, and you just use what you had. That's right. So this next one, I'm so happy to have it because my grandmother made it, my, mo my mother's mother. And I absolutely love it. And I found out after I got it that this is called a grandmother's fan, fan quilt. And so uh, made by my grandma. And it's really fun to just watch and uh, look at the stitches and see how she had decided to do it and how she decided to quilt it because she, she has quilted basically stitch in the ditch on the back, I mean, up, all the way through, just so that it would lay down properly. And it's probably also only got a sheet in the middle. Um, but it's a, it's a real comfort after she was gone to be able to wrap myself into it. And I just felt like she was with me. So anyway, and so when I found myself being a caregiver uh, and having to stay home a lot, then I really needed something to do, and I'd always wanted to quilt, and I was stopped by a, um, a craft show one time, uh, just down here close by, and was talking to a woman because she was selling little pieces of fabric. I said, I always wanted to quilt. She says, well, we have a quilting group, and it meets here in this little town that I live in. It's like 10 minutes away. And so I jumped in uh, with both feet, and this was about five years ago, five and a half years ago now. And uh, all, <laughs> whatever I've learned, <laughs> I've gathered there. And another thing that I always have, uh, not always, but I've done regularly, is I've gone to um, classes at the quilt show in Augusta. Uh, they have one every year, and they always have a lot of classes. They, they bring in their best designers and their best quilters, and they give classes. And this was a paper pieced um, quilt. It was actually only supposed to be a medallion. And um, it was my first attempt at paper piecing. And paper piecing, I mean, I guess I could explain it at some point, but it, you do use paper as your guide as to where you put your seams. Um, <laughs> otherwise, you kind of have to see it to understand it. Um, and then when I got the middle together, I thought it was so beautiful. And I went and showed Rob, and he said, well, isn't that supposed to be the middle of a, of a bed quilt? And it just got me to thinking. and so. The, my, the leader of my little group down there at the quilting place um, showed me how to piece this part onto it so that it could be one big hole. And then I had made another medallion so I could put it all in the corners. 
And I just, this is the one I use on our bed and I love it. This is beautiful. And the back is really cool. I love this little, this piece of fabric in the back. And I don't know how much they can see, but the patterns that you've stitched into this thing. Well, are what just... I did was I didn't know exactly how to do the quilting on it. And so somebody said, well, why don't you use the pattern of the star? And so I traced the star and put it onto um, the, the paper that sticks to everything, you know, and then I sewed over the lines on there. So th this, this pattern is the same as this pattern. And there it is again. And, uh, but anyway, it was, it was a great project. And I just, I love the thing. So I sleep under it all winter, not in the summer because it's too hot, but <laughs> in the winter. <laughs> this next one is the one that my mom insisted basically that I make for her for her 80th birthday. And not that I was unwilling to make her a quilt, but um, I just didn't ha know where to go from there. But shortly after that, I went to another one of these classes, and this woman was doing sampler quilts. And she was telling, her, her quilts would tell a story, like she had one of her, a trip to Australia, and it had kangaroos and things all sewn into it. And so that got me to thinking. And so this is kind of, it's mom's quilt, but it's also the story of her life, a good part of it. And so, like, she's been to Japan, so here's the pagoda. Um, she would play the piano and sing. <laughs> um, trees, we were in Colorado many years, and she loved it. And that's also mountains here. And um, she was raised on a farm, so this is a churn dash. And over there by my sister is a grandmother's flower pattern. And uh, there's one for each of her living grandchildren, one uh, one piece of it. Uh, this is basically because she was born on Valentine's Day. Yeah, her birthday was February 14th. Yep. Yeah. And this one, Elizabeth did um, to add to, you know, to the quilt. So she had part of it too. And it's just the spiritual life. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, and the, these squares, I'm not going to get into it, but th these three on the corners are us three sisters. And then uh, down there in the corner, California, those are our birds of paradise. Yes. The flowers they have there. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, um, I'm not going to you know, get into any more depth than that either. She loved this thing. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. loved it. And the back of this, um, my, my quilty friend said, oh, I've got this backing I was going to use on my dad's quilt, and I never got it done, and he died. So <laughs> you, if you want to use it, you can, and it's just perfect for the back of mom's quilt. Yeah. So it's a beautiful, beautiful quilt. You should have seen me trying to figure out how to do that one square, but I came up with something <laughs> and I did it. <laughs> and it fits right in. It's, it's really good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and <laughs> but I did the one square. I can't remember what this pattern is called, but it was also a class. Oh, it's so beautiful. Um, and I had pulled out all these bright colors of this fabric that all went together that I had actually just in my stash. And I got it all, got all the little squares done and everything. They said, well, just put them together, you know. And so I put them together, and it looked like a bag of Skittles. Because <laughs> there, was, there was no really definition to it. And so I thought, well, I need to put them on point and sash them. Like, that idea came to me kind of in the middle of the night. And so I sashed them and put them on point, and I really love it now. It looks like a stained so, glass window. Well, kind of. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, I love the contrast. What does sashing mean? Oh, the sashing is the, the um, strips of fabric between the squares. So before that, they were just on top of it, you know, next, right next to each other, and it just didn't have any definition. This gives you the contrast so you can really see them. Right, right, exactly. Now I've got some more projects over there by my sister, so. And I just also, you know, um, the, the, the stitching on this. Oh, yeah. Is yeah. just absolutely. Um, if you wanna, the, the back, I learned how to use a long arm. Uh, you can take lessons at places for a certain amount of money, and then you can rent the long arm to to make the, the stitching. And so I did this myself with a pattern. It's not done very well, but when you get it all done, nobody notices. It's beautiful. And it just, it, I like it, how it just fits right in with this. You needed something curvy to go with all the squares. So I, I like the way it turned out. Okay, now I've got a couple things back there behind my sister, so. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, and this is the, pill, the, well, it's kind of a pillowcase, but it's a case that I made for moms. I just used some of the fabric that it was in her, her quilt to make that. And then just recently, so you put the quilt in there if you need yeah, to store it. Yeah, it. it's just, 
it, it fits right in there. And so I made it just the right size to fold it a certain way and it fits right in. And then in my quilt club, uh, we were making these for Valentine's Day, this, these hearts. And so I made one like, made my heart like this. And I just thought it would go really well, you know, in the same room with mom's quilt, wherever I decide to, whatever we decide to do with it. It right. could be like hanging on the wall because it's all this, it's a lot of the same fabrics and it would go right along with her quilt. Um, and just another couple of little projects that I've made. Um, this is a purse I love. And this is called um, Bargello. Bargello. <laughs> Good. Because <laughs> you taught me. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and, um, I, I had made one for my sister. It was a bit, slightly bigger bag and everything. And um, my niece liked it so much she wanted one, so I made a different color one for her. And I liked her so much I made me one, so this is, and I use it an awful lot. I just really like it. Um, another couple little projects here. Um, this was a purse that I made that mom decided at one point she was going to take home, so she took it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Hardly without asking, but I've, I've put, put uh, um, you know, these relaxing coloring books for adults in here with some, some uh, markers, and so that's all ready to go if somebody wants to be creative and make some of those. But it's it's a, also it's just a sweet little purse, and the the um, lining fabric that I used and then used on the bottom was out of a piece of fabric that a dear friend in Germany gave me. She laid this fabric out on the floor and went snip 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 and made me this beautiful skirt, and then gave me the remnants. Oh. And so the skirt I used until I just absolutely wore it out, and um, I took the remnants and I still have some, and it just fit perfectly on this. On this purse. I remember you wearing that skirt. Yeah. Oh goodness, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Katarina made that. Kat oh my goodness, that's yeah. so cool. Um, and this was a fun little project. It's a for my iPad. It's just an iPad holder. It's got a little po pocket. So that was fun. And then this is I made something similar for for Beth for her. Mm -hmm. A little pit, little bitty paper piecing stuff. It's just you can put a bunch of stuff in it. And it's just fun, and I like the fabrics in it. I think. No, 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 one more. One more. It's also a recent addition. This is so <laughs> cute. I love it. This, these are fabrics that came from Mom's stash. Oh, wow. So I got them from Mom's stash, and I got picked up this little pattern, and it came with the liner, and you'll see why that's important. And you unbutton the buttons, and you open it up, and there's your little iron and the surface you can iron on. That is really cool, and it's just it's just sweet. And the, the this came with this kind of this fabric came with the the kit, and then the rest of it I got a like I said out of stuff that mom had. Um, well, and like when you go to your sewing class, you just easily take your iron along. Right, right. It's that's so handy. Yeah, and we all we all like to take our little irons and our littlest sewing machines and everything when we go to these our classes, because they're just easier to carry. Otherwise, you end up spending half the time of your class just carrying things in and out, but that's just little and practical and cute. That's great. <laughs> okay, so cool. I think that's, yeah, that's it, unless you want to see the, we could show them the, the long the, arm machine. Yeah, so the mini long arm. Yeah, we'll, Alrighty. we'll do that. We'll do that. Okay. <laughs> Hi, uh, this is my mini long arm, and this is my Millie. Hi, Millie. Such a sweetie. Um, and when I learned how to do the long arm quilting, I've been wanting one of these. Now this is this one's a little small, um, but it has been serving me well. And basically what you do is you wrap the, the fabric around these bars here, and then you have a taut surface, and you run the machine over the surface, and it works like a Etch-a-Sketch. So it goes in all directions. And then you can, if you're any good at drawing on an Etch-a-Sketch, <laughs> you can do this. Sadly, I'm not good at drawing on an Etch-a-Sketch. <laughs> But what, what I have been doing to get a pattern is that I got this, this pattern off the internet and I printed it out a couple times and then I've got a laser on here and when I turn the laser, I have to, this isn't, <laughs> this wasn't part of the thing but most of them have a laser and I, I, I would turn it on and then you come along and you follow these lines on the pattern to get the pattern to be sewn into the fabric, and so you know you're kind of, kind of cheating, but um, not really. 
Oh. Well, yeah. I mean, you still have to guide it. Um, they do have cheating machines now, too, that you just program them with a computer program. And they do all the quilting. And then they beep when you need to move the fabric one way or the other. Wow. And um, this frame, uh, I can quilt anything on it because it, I can move things from side to side and back to front. It just takes a lot of moving. And so, you, you know, you have a full-size quilt, you're going to be moving it twice for each row, and then you have probably 12, 14 rows. And so it just, it would take a while to do it, but it, it, Compared to doing it on a sewing machine, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. And, I, and I, like the one up that I did for our bed was done on my home sewing machine, this guy right here. And so you're trying to get all that fabric up into this neck, and oh. Yeah. So, I did it, but it's not as much fun. Um, while you're down here, I'll show you the one other project that I'm going to be working on. Am I this year? No. Okay. Um, this year, Rob and I are going to be married 40 years, and so I'm going to make one of these wedding star quilts. And I've got a lot of the fabric. It's paper piecing. So that will be right up my alley. It's intricate. And I've already got a bunch of the strips cut and put together. You, know, you need um, groups of eight strips. And so I've done a bunch of them there. So I'm kind of ready to really get going. Um, I just haven't got started yet. But I've only got till the end of December, so <laughs> got to get cracking. Anyway, <laughs> that's my story. <laughs> And I'm sticking to it. Right, and I'm sticking to it. So if I get it done, I will let you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Dana made this elephant wall hanging for some friends of hers in Germany. They had traveled in Africa, and when she went to visit them in Germany, she gave this to them. Isn't it beautiful? So here I am, I wanted to show you a few things back home. Um, this quilt here is one that Dana made especially for me with colors that she knows I just love. And uh, it's got such a beautiful border with all the little squares and the stitching on it is just really a pretty pattern. And this is before she got her long arm. And if you see these, um, this thread in the sunshine, it has like a metallic glint to it. I wish there was some sun coming in right now, but it's got like almost a metallic shininess. So I absolutely love this quilt. It's very, very special to me. So it was one of the that she made for me. Um, I wanted to show you, uh, Dane and I did a video one time. Um, this is a iPad cover that I quilted that she helped me with. And these are wonderful. I've done a little uh, video about how to make these. You can put dishes in them to put them in the microwave and um, easy to lift out, different sizes. And then if you set something hot or cold in your lap, it's comfortable. And then this is one of our first projects, and boy, was this something else. Um, this is my Bible cover. This is Bargello, like Dana showed you on the bag that she made. And we kind of came up with this plan. It was so much work, and I, I don't know what I would have done without her, but I did make it. She helped me to put all the pieces together. But it's got a little pocket here, and um, it fits my Bible perfectly. And um, I absolutely love this. So these are just a few of the quilting projects that she's been able to help me to do. And see the Bible just tucks right in. And uh, I have a nice way to carry it. So I love that. And then she did make me a little um, like sewing a quilting kit like she showed you out of some deep purple. And I love that too. So... Um, just wanted to show you a few things that I've enjoyed with the quilting here at home. Um, I had one of Grandma Tracy's, our great grandma's quilts too. I think I wore it completely out until it completely fell apart. But I absolutely loved that. And um, so yeah, alrighty. He loves laying on the quilt on the bed. <laughs> so, oh, it's I've learned so much. Um, from all the stuff that she's been 
teaching me and showing me and um, you know I appreciate the wonderful little setup that you did for me I absolutely love it and it's so relaxing yeah. and so um, thank you for the tour she's amazing and I just wanted to get to show that off so anyway I did it out of desperation so <laughs> but think of all the creative peaceful moments it's given yeah. you right what a gift yeah. that's been right yeah so she's no longer has to be the caretaker but now she's left with this incredible skill and she's also learning to be an incredible uh, sewing machine technician which yeah, I'm learning how to repair sewing machines so it's a uh, that's been a whole nother whole nother deal <laughs> that's, uh, that's been very good that's so, pretty cool yeah. it's not a, not a talent I have <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for joining us um, love you guys and be blessed and we will see you soon alrighty bye 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 While we were there in Maine, it snowed for three days in April. Our last evening, we went to a favorite restaurant of theirs and watched the snow as the river flowed by. designated driver. <laughs> right. You have to stay in the car while we eat and bring your food. Right. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> oh, goodness.